welcome to the weekly broadcast of Kingdom Christian Church, Life in the Word, with our pastor, Dr. Gabriel Rogers Sr. Uh, I want to talk today from a subject that's been on my heart as of late, and um, we're going to be prophetic and academic at the same time, uh, but I believe it's going to bless you real good, uh, and it's going to be a clarion call for all of us in this room to answer, amen, the call of God for your life, to answer that call, not just to know the call, but to what? Answer. Anybody ever had your phone ringing? And you knew it was ringing. And then you look down and it was Aunt Tutu and you didn't feel like talking to her. Right. So it's one thing to know somebody's trying to call me. It's a whole nother thing to answer. God works the same way. He's always trying to call somebody to do something. I mean, he's always trying to get somebody involved in his mission in the earth realm. Amen. Because I'm going to say something that's going to really uh, challenge some theology, y'all. Uh, God is not a man. And since God is not a man, God cannot, whew, will not come down to earth and do what only a man can do. He will use a man, but he is not a man. OK, God is not a man. Is the Bible. Does the Bible say God is not a man. Yeah. Now we go on to say he's not a man that he should lie. But let's first understand he's not a man. OK, see, I'm not a fish, so I can't stay underwater. But for so long, because I'm a human being, I'm not a fish. Well, God's not of man descent. He's not a mankind. He's got different DNA. Now, don't mix up what I'm saying. I didn't say that God is limited. Amen. God will get his agenda done. Will he not? Amen. But I'm saying today, in order for God to get it done, he has a rule system that when he created heaven and earth, he created you and I to do his will on earth. Angels do his will in heaven. Some angels do his will on earth. There are cre the Bible talks about created beings. We are all created for different reasons. I believe it might be Colossians 1 and 16. It says all things were made by him and for him, by him and for him. So really, he made Lucifer to be an angel, but he jacked it up. <laughs> Lucifer was a principality. All principalities aren't bad. He was a principality made by him and what? For him. That may be Colossians 1 16. You read that on your own free time. Look it up. Find out where it is. You and I were made by him for him. Adam and Eve was made by him and they were made for him. They jacked it up. Is this true? All right. So I want us to understand that God's not a man. God is a God. He's a heavenly being. He's going to play his role. He's going to do what God does. OK, but God does have a request. And I've been blessed by this. And he and I've been fellowshipping on this for the last few weeks. And I believe I, I'm ready to deliver it to you. Are you ready to hear it? OK, so today I want to talk about. What happens when God finds a man? I want to deal with that. I want to deal with what occurs when God finds a man. What occurs when you answer the call? And I want to lay a doctrinal foundation, a good theological foundation, because I know this goes against the grain of what some would call the sovereignty of God in its pureness, i.e., Whatever is going to happen is going to happen anyway. Number one, that's a tainted definition of the sovereignty of God. But number two, amen, whatever happens is not going to happen anyway. If that were true, why were we laying hands on the sick? I believe that in order for the sick people in this room to recover, it was necessary for us to lay hands on the sick. Because if whatever happened is going to happen anyway, why do we pray for some things to happen? 
Why do we touch and agree? Why do we say thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? I've walked around many abortion clinics down through the years praying and decreeing and into abortion. And I believe that when the Roe v. Wade law changed, it changed because of my prayers. It didn't just happen. That was not just political. Amen. That's the power of God getting involved. Amen. When all of these baby bills passed through North Carolina and you could no longer kill a baby after 12 weeks, that's prayer. That's the power of God. So whatever is going to happen does not always happen. Amen. God needs a man to do what he wants to see done in earth realm. And so today, amen, if you stay with me, I'm going to give you four points to mutter over, if I have time, on what occurs when God finds a man. Is that okay? So let's lay theological background first, Ezekiel 22 and 30, amen, <clears throat> so that we have good scripture to lean in on this. This had to do with Israel's wicked leaders and the sins of Jerusalem. And uh, so they were kind of on the outs with God. And uh, God says something very, very meaningful that I've been preaching for years. And I'm hoping that you all can wrap your arms around this big tree today. I hope you can hug this tree, but I'm going to teach it anyway. Bible says, so I saw. Does that mean that God looks for stuff? God says, so I saw. I was looking for, what were you looking for, God? An angel? What were you looking for? A cat? What about a fish? No. Because they all have other duties. Are you listening to me? God said, I sought for a man among the wicked people of Jerusalem who are on the outs with me, who would make up a wall, who would make a difference in that culture and stand in what should be known as gaps of sin, gaps of breakdown. Gaps of fallouts to stand in the gap. I was looking for a man to stand up and build ministry that would help young women keep their babies. Mm -hmm. And a time when North Carolina is leading in the abortion crisis. I was looking for somebody that would do what? Stand in the gap. All right. Before me and on behalf of the land that's in trouble. The land that could use a what? A man. Right. And he said, I look for that, that I should not destroy it. But guys, this is not a man talking. This is not an angel talking. This is not anybody talking but God. And God lets us in on his world when he said, I look for a man, but I found no one. You wait, 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 wait. God, you are out of a resource. Yes. There was a resource that I needed at the time during the times of Jerusalem when they were broken down. But because none of them would obey me, I couldn't find one to stand in the gap. Am I messing up your God theology a little bit? Yeah, let's work a little bit harder on that foundational doctrine. Let's go to another, amen, Old Testament major prophet. And let's look at Isaiah chapter six, verse number eight. If I give you the Bible, will you believe it? Yeah, I'm not talking about Pastor Rogers' opinion this morning. I'm saying, let's go to the word of God and really let the word preach his own message. Amen? Because this foundation is crucial for you to understand four points. Bible says, this is, amen, Isaiah, when he is being called. Isaiah, when he is being what? Called. Isaiah, when he is being what? Called. How many of y'all know we all have a calling? All of us have something. All of us have a gap that we are designed to stand in. Your earthly existence is not just so that you can go to a theme park every year in Florida and enjoy your family and take vacations and do this and do that. No, God has raised you up, Esther, for such a time as this to make a, di a difference in some key area by which he needs it done. And God is saying, I seek for men, not gender specific, mankind. I seek for ladies. I seek for a black woman that will be soft and dainty and a culture of confusion to be a poster child of how our ladies should carry themselves in marriage and in motherhood. And I'm glad in Charlotte, North Carolina, I found one. That's just one example. OK, 
So it's not man only, it's mankind. I look for women, I look for men, I look for anointed people. You know, when I want to start an anointed, spirit-filled Christian school, I'm going to look for a man. When I want the sick to be ministered to in a certain kind of way, I'm going to look for a man. When I need a Christian, spirit-filled, convalescent home, I need a man to start that home. I don't start homes. I can't start homes because I'm God. I'm not. I'm not a man. Are y'all going to work with me today? I feel like you're with me. So let's look at what Isaiah had to say about his calling. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom? Look at God's reasoning. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Well, that sounds like Ezekiel 22 and 30, mom. That sounds like God is searching. God is searching for somebody to play a role in the earth realm yet again. In Ezekiel's time, he was looking for somebody to stand in the gap. In Isaiah's time, he needed somebody that would stand up and write one of the first Old Testament prophetic scriptures on healing and the birth of and the life of Christ. For it was Isaiah who wrote Isaiah 53 and 5 that says, and he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastising our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. If I don't find a man to do this, there's a portion of prophetic utterance that is at risk. Who will go and who shall I send? And this is what every believer in this room ought to be saying online and in here right now. Then I said, here am I, send me. Try it out. Here am I, send me. Come on, say it again. Here am I, send me. This message today in the way of introduction is a clarion call for you to get off of your dusty seats with your church going, makeup wearing, three-piece selves, and find out what the mission of God is for your life. And for once in your life, in 2024, no more excuses. Break out and become who God has called you to be because he's looking for a few good men. That's what this message is about. Church going is not a threat to the devil. Everybody goes to church. <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? Joining auxiliaries is not a threat to the devil. Serving in here means just that. You made us more comfortable in here. But I'm talking about what is your assignment? What is your place of kingdom impact? What demons are running roughshod on the world because you're on the sideline instead of in the game? God said, I look for a man to stand in the gap. He said, I sought, I sought for a man. He said in this verse, who shall I send? I am searching. I'm looking for somebody that will do what I ask him to do. We don't have time to go to all these scriptures, but have I given you a good foundation? Can I just mention parenthetically Genesis 18, where God had a very similar conversation with Abraham when Sodom was at risk of being burned down. And God said to brother Abraham, amen, peradventure, if you could find 50 men, I won't destroy it. If you find 40, I won't destroy it. Even when I believe the 35, I won't destroy it. Went all the way down to 10 and said, I won't destroy it. But in the midst of all of those sexually lewd and lascivious brothers who would have preferred to have a man than to be a man. Do you all understand? They came knocking on Abraham's door and all but knocked the door down to get the brothers, angels that was in the house. Lot, are you with me? Lot's house. And Lot stands up and said, man, don't go after the men. Go after my daughters. And they didn't want the virgin women, which, by the way, good theology. What was Lot's daughter still doing being virgins when he had son-in-laws? What were those brothers doing? Can I stop parenthetically and make a real strong point right here? Honey, if you marry a man and he not walking you down every day, can't get enough of your love, baby, something ain't right.
I was counseling a newly led couple one day and uh, the wife came in. This is years ago at my practice, not in this church. And the wife came in and uh, she said, I, I don't know what it is, Dr. Ross. He, just, he, he won't get with me. I mean, you know, uh, even on our wedding night, this is a true story. He said on our wedding night, uh, he looked over to me when I'm trying to get him hot and ready. And, uh, and he looked at me and said, is that all you married me for? I said, kill him. <laughs> kill him. Burn him at the stake, baby. If you got to the wedding night and that brother could keep his hands to himself? You all do whatever you want with this feminizing of men culture we're in. But see, I'm still a masculine dude. I, I don't have she motions. I don't. Not me. I don't read books that say she motions. I don't tap into my feminine side. I don't have one. That's right. I'm all boy. Amen. And all I'm trying to say is, is nobody could get me on my wedding night. There was no sense in calling me. I was not to be found, honey. Are you all listening to me? That's called manhood. So you know the culture was debaucherous, but watch this. Let's not throw homosexuals away. Is there a man, though, that can get some homosexuals saved? And see, those are those barriers. Those are those gates. I'm not making fun of anybody. Amen. Won't you share the love of Christ with somebody that has wrong emotions? They say New York has 100 different genders, certifiable genders. Me, he, she. I forgot what they call some of these other categories. Yeah, all kinds of stuff, right? No, I'm not bi, I'm just, right? Is this true, right? But is there a man that can get in the gap? Can I say something parenthetically? Because my message is not on homosexuality today, but since we're there, do you know we have actually failed the homosexual community in many cases? I'm going to tell you how church has failed the homosexual community. Because they're some of the most gifted, excellent people you would ever meet. Instead of ministering deliverance and freedom to them, you put them up and made them sing. When you should have been getting with them in the back room, ministering the love of Jesus to them, working on them, understanding their damages and traumas in life and how they got there to begin with and covered them and kept it a secret and ministered to them and built them up. And before you know it, they would have walked out their freedom. So I'm not coming hard against any one sin today. I'm saying any gap in our culture is because the love of God is not shed abroad in the church. You're not doing your job. Amen. Alcoholics should not have to go to some worldly model to get off alcohol. They should come to church community buildings and sit in Christian groups and have Christian accountability and no longer drink their liver to smoke. So it's not just homosexuality. I'm not trying to turn somebody off. But I'm saying all of these gaps are because God could not find a man. And in Lot's case, that's what was going on. Sodom and Gomorrah is where we get the word sodomite. Amen. Sodom and Gomorrah, the culture was so debaucherous and God came down from 50 to 10 and still couldn't find one righteous man except Abraham. Are you all in here today? Amen. And of course, Lot at the time who was vexed and ultimately went awry. So let's get back to the topic. Y'all still love me? Are you mad at me or am I doing OK? Yeah. So what happens when God finds a man? The bottom line is when God finds a man, Second Chronicles 16 and 9 gives you a man. What's going to happen next in that man's life? And I'm going to give you four things to mull over this week. Amen. That you should look forward to in a positive vein. That's going to happen if you sign up for God's army. When God finds them in, because the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth to do it. What? Show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is what? Loyal, Loyal to him. But these weren't even the guys, because if you keep reading, the Bible says, but in this you have done foolishly. I wanted to show myself strong on your behalf, but you rebelled against what I wanted to do. So I'm figuring something out, y'all. This is really good. I'm really starting to understand that this idea of finding a man is not as easy as we think. 
I'm saying God can do anything. I'm saying God is almighty. But in God's law system, in his rule system, when he made mankind, and by the way, he did not make a mistake. Somebody say amen. amen. But when God made angels and when God made men, he put an irrefutable law in place which will never, ever change. That is, until you and I have glorified bodies and our will is perfectly aligned with him, he gave every man a will, free moral agency, and even when God wants to use a man or a woman, he or she still gets to pick. God doesn't always get what he wants through that person. He does get what he wants ultimately, but he doesn't always get what he wants through that person. Pastor Long preaches a great message called, is God using you or your backup? All right. So now don't don't twist my message and start saying, oh, God's out of resources. No, because Psalm 75 says he sits down one and sets up another. I'm going to say something so profound. I can't necessarily tell you that uh, I was God's first pick to pastor the city of Charlotte. <laughs> Ain't that humble. I can't tell you that necessarily. I bet there were some other men that God tried to raise up when I was in college 30 years ago that would obey him. Are you all listening to me? And you all know Pastor Robin Go. I think he did a dynamic job in his tenure. Did he not? Pastor in the city. Are you all listening to me? So I'm not defaming anybody, but I'm saying between he and I and other places and spaces, I bet that there were some other people that God probably tried to raise up to help this city and get some things done in this city and in this world. But I'm telling you, it's not always as easy as we think for God to find a man, because by the time he finds a man, that man has to remain consistently with him. You can get married today and your spouse can go another route. Don't raise your hand, but some of you are in this room. You're not even married to the same person you married. <laughs> they were a certain way when you got married and you almost feel like they tricked you. Because the human heart is a trick. I never listen to any member that comes up to me and says, Pastor Rogers, boy, do I love you. I'm going to be with you forever. You, you make me nervous when you start talking like that because I realize that forever is about to come. Because the reality is the reason why you're saying that is you had to contemplate it. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So don't tell me how you're going to be with me forever. Just be with me. Because mankind is a trip. Some of the best advice I got when I started the church years ago, a man pastor said, hey, yeah, wear them people loosely. Just wear them loosely. Because, hey, amen, they're going to be on fire today. They're going to get miracles. They're going to get breakthrough. God going to heal their body. They're going to start making six figures, all, all clothes on their new house. And then you're going to say one thing. <laughs> That's actually Bible. Like sodomy and sodomites that some of y'all had to work through. You're going to say one thing and they're going to start contemplating, wondering if I'm in the right church. Well, is it in the Word? Thank you for watching this week's broadcast of Kingdom Christian Church, Life in the Word, with our pastor, Dr. Gabriel Rogers Sr. And now, stay tuned for a special message. Well, God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. And I want to keep this message of salvation so simple. Did you know that tomorrow is not promised you? Did you know that the rapture could occur and or your life could end? Amen. And so I want to invite you to accept Jesus as Lord of your life right now. As you can tell by all that's going on in the world, things have changed dramatically and the end is very, very near. And so it's time for us to have our house in order and to have Jesus in our heart and to make him Lord of our life. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. And I believe you rose from the dead for me. So I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, Jesus Christ, as Lord of my life. As a result of this prayer, I am saved. 
there you go. Amen. What's your next step? Call this prayer line, this number that you see on the screen. We want to pray with you. We want to get you connected to the church. Amen. We want to get you in line with uh, your purpose in God. And most importantly, we want to help you to preserve this salvation moment that you just had. This is the most most important excuse me, decision that you could ever make. So congratulations. As we always say, welcome to the family of God. We look forward to hearing from you. And we're so glad that if you prayed that prayer and you really meant it in your heart, that we will see you in heaven. But we hope to see you before then. Call us today so that you can get tapped into some discipleship. God bless you. And as always, remember, Jesus is coming back real soon. Take care. If you enjoyed today's broadcast and would like to order a copy of the full message, simply visit our website, kingdomchristianchurch.org, and click on the Shop tab to place your order today. They signal to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. You are the partners in the other boat. At Kingdom Christian Church, we are making significant kingdom impact by touching thousands of people each week with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many have come to the saving grace of our Lord through the preached word and through the empowering ministries of our church. We invite you today to become a kingdom partner. As a kingdom partner, your financial support will help us to further spread the gospel of Jesus Christ through building acquisitions like the Grace House for Ladies and Unwed Moms, daily television, and other various opportunities for discipleship. To become a partner today, simply scan the QR code on the screen or visit our website and click on Become a Partner to complete a short form. As a Kingdom Partner, you will receive our monthly partner newsletter as well as updates regarding the ministry's latest events. You will also receive the greatest benefit of partnership, which is the consistent prayer from our pastor, Dr. Gabriel Rogers and the KCC family. We pray you will receive a 100-fold return on your giving. Sign up today to receive your free gift for partnering with us. And as always, remember, Jesus is coming back real soon. Attention partners, join us for Kingdom Conference 2024. This year's theme is Strengthening the Church, taken from Acts 16.5. Join conference host and pastor, Dr. Gabriel Rogers, and special guest speaker, Pastor Rondi Long from the Kingdom Church of Houston for five days of grace. You do not want to miss this anointed event. Registration is open. Scan the QR code or visit our website for conference details and to register today. Not local to Charlotte? No problem. This conference will be streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. Kingdom Conference 2024. Don't miss it. Announcing the release of Dr. Rogers' latest book, 10 Tests of Success, now available for purchase, hard copy, or ebook. In this book, Dr. Rogers identifies 10 character development tests that, if consistently passed, will lead to sustainable success in the life that God designed for you. He explains what it really takes to experience the good success that God has prescribed for every Christian. To purchase your copy, scan the QR code or visit drgabrielrogers.com to order today.